think I'm gonna get out there. Yeah. You think it's gonna change you? I wanna build something special. A real dynasty. Far out, man. Leave the dynasties to me. Yo, what's up, Larry? Come on, Red. You afraid of competition? No, but you're no competitor. From here on out, we are playing to win. Hey, how you, man. How you, Good, how you yeah. doing? I got to start with you, uh, Tracy Les, because I mean, the, the story of Jack McKinney, I'm a LA import. So, you know, for me, I thought the, the Lakers have always been this dynasty. And you go back to look at all the greats from the past and you think that they've always been this winning team, but to see what this coach almost was for the Lakers and later be coach of the year later, like how, 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 uh, how important was it for you to tell this, this forgotten hero story, so to speak? Well, it became important for me because I mean, I didn't know it. I didn't know the story. And I remember the, the Lakers. I was a, I was a teenager when the Showtime Lakers began, but I didn't remember the story of Jack McKinney. And I didn't know it until I read these scripts, until I read the book. But yeah, you feel like not only is it a compelling story, a compelling life story, a story of this guy's challenges and his ups and downs, but you, you also, you do kind of feel like, well, this guy didn't get enough credit. This, guy, this guy's story deserves to be told. His story should be out there and should be known because it, it seems as if to hear uh, Jeff, to, to read in Jeff Perlman's writing, it seems as if not only was he the architect of this very particular winning franchise, the formula uh, that, that started this franchise off on this incredible winning streak, he really also kind of changed the game of basketball, the way the game is played. And to have his career cut so short is really a tragedy. You think about your life's work, and just as you are, you are right at the mountaintop of your life's work. It all just gets taken away from you. It's it's Greek what happened to that guy. And Devon, I mean, you you have the most personal connection to this this whole story being uh, a product of the Showtime Lakers. Literally, um, uh, how first how was how is uh, uh, how how did. Uh, Norm take the story and your know, portrayal of him. Did he take any uh, hesitance into the, the fur coats and the way that he portrayed you portrayed any of the scenes in the writing or uh, like just tell me about like that his reaction. Uh, my dad's joke was like, "Man, I don't wear no fur coats." But what's really funny is that I looked up footage of him like back in the day in old pictures, and I was like, "What's this right here?" <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? He's like, oh man, well, like, you know, and the excuses came. Dude. So um, yeah, it was really, it, it was really fun. Uh, you know, you know, messing with my dad. Uh, his, his big thing, he was like, you know, we're not playing any fictitious characters. Make sure you do us justice. Make sure you do us right. Um, don't make me look like a fool, man. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I got all of that. But um, you know, it, it, it's funny because a lot of people are like, have your dad seen the show? Has, has he seen anything? I didn't show him anything. Because for me, I didn't want to show him stuff and him get in my head. I just wanted to do it. I wanted him to see the finished product. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I think he's going to like it. I, I, I definitely think everybody's going to like it. Um, you know, it, it's not. We are. These are heroes to us. Um, so I, I think that we portray them in a, in a, in a great light and. Um, I don't think anybody's going to be too too upset about it because I, I I think we have brilliant actors behind the characters, and um, yeah, it's going to be a show, <laughs> Showtime, baby. It's always hard, like when you have a, a a popular, famous parent, for you to like kind of do your own thing. But I mean, you've you've uh, and I know he he acted also, but I mean you, I know you did some some ADR for for dead presidents. I remember talking to you during for the movie Prom and you're in this season of Snowfall. How has it been for you to like, you know, beat your own path and make your own path for, for you and uh, not to have to just live under his shadow? I and mean, it's great. Yeah. It, it's great, man. Like, I feel like finally, you know, I get it. I get acting. I think I know how to act now. You know, whereas before for me, it was just memorizing lines or, you know, going through the motions of it. Um, now for me, it's, 
it's not necessarily the lines, it's like the, the, the subtext of what you're saying. So, um, you know, and it's the give and take in a scene, you know what I mean? You can't be, you can be prepared with your dialogue. For me, I, I just have to know the lines kind of like the back of my hand so I can play along with the dialogue and I can see what the other actor is gonna bring. And that's when you can really start having fun. At least for me, that's kind of my process. I've always had a photographic memory. So to memorize lines for me isn't anything, but it's the, the other part. It's like, um, what are we really saying? What are we really trying to convey to the audience here? So my whole journey, you know, as when I was younger, um, you know, I was just, you know, everybody remembers me as a cute kid in the bodyguard. You know, I didn't really know how to act. You know, Whitney just thought I was a cutie and, you know, hired me for the movie. But as I've gotten older and, you know, roles like Snowfall have come out after this, you know, I like playing characters that are completely anomalous to my personality. I want to step outside of myself and do something different, whether it's like I have a tattoo here, whether it's like shave my head bald. I always want to change and conform, you know, and I think that's what keeps um, the best actors and the greatest actors alive. And that's why they have longevity in their careers. And that's what I attain to get to. So um, I think I'm on a good path and HBO was definitely a really good, uh, a good way to, uh, to get to where I want to get like these two that we're talking to right now, who I admire so much, by the way, I can't stop saying that. <laughs> Jason with you and John C. Riley, I know Mike Kemp's appears in this. There's so many like comedic actors and stuff that you would think that this is a comedy and it has comedic moments, but how does it feel like have this, cast of characters and bring off this this story that's not a comedy but I mean that it feels so authentic you all you all feel like who the characters you guys are playing oh thanks man yeah well the tone that I've always liked the best uh has all the stuff you know I think life is funny I I've always felt like comedy is a really good way a way to wear down the defenses of an audience in order to get at some real dramatic themes. Um, it's just a great tool. Um, I think laughing through tears is the best version of crying. And, you know, I think people taking things extremely seriously is also very funny. So I, I just think the blend of all this stuff is present in the show. It's what I love. The other thing that I wanted to do personally, um, because most people I think don't know the story of the coaches of this year, you know, this is kind of an untold story that's just going on in the background. Um, you don't know that Westhead is going to have to kind of assume the mantle of head coach when McKinney goes down. So what I wanted to do in episodes four and five, when I'm just kind of bopping around is to kind of uh, lure the audience into thinking, Oh, Oh, fun. Siegel's going to be comic relief. So that then when McKinney goes down and Westhead becomes coach, hopefully as an audience, I have been so kind of like bumbling about that you feel like, oh, no, oh, no, this is going to go horribly. That was that was my hope in the kind of construction of it. Well, yeah, I pulled it off, man. I appreciate Thanks. all you guys uh, and your performances. I've only got to see five episodes. Can't wait to the world to see it with me so I could talk to all my friends on Twitter about it. But. Whatever y'all do, I'll be following. So keep on acting and doing y'all thing, and I'll keep on keep on cheering for y'all from the stage. Thanks, thanks, man. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you.